Again, welcome to Python programming language. In this lectures, we're going to discuss about decision structures and Boolean logic. This lectures cover chapter three of our course textbook, which is unit three, part one lectures. So our main objective is to cover the concept of if statement, which we also call the one way decision making, and also if else statement, two way decision making. We're also going to learn how to compare strengths in Python. And also the nested decision structures is when we have more than two decisions to pick one from it. Then we're also going to learn the logical operators and Boolean variables. So we're going to start with the if statement. Here first we have the definition for a control structure. And a control structure is a logical design that controls order in which set of statement execute. In any programming language, we have three types of control structures. The first one is the sequence structure. Sequence structure in programming tells us that programming language or uh, expressions or statement execute in sequential order from top down. Then we have the decision structure, which again tells us based on a decision is true or false, a statement is going to be executed. Then we have the repetition structure or the loop structure which tell us to do, if we want to perform the same task more than once, we can be able to do that using loops. So a sequence structure is a set of statements that execute in the order they appear in sequential order. And also a decision structure, specific action performed only if a condition exists. So either the condition will be true or false. This decision structure also known as selection structure. So here in the flow chart, a demo represents true or false condition that must be tested. An action can be conditionally executed based on the condition. So if a condition is true, we are going to execute a specific statement. If condition is false, we may execute some statement. But again, with the if statement, we only have one way. So when the condition is true, the statement will be executed. When the condition is false, we are going to skip that statement. So we have a single alternative decision structure, which provide only one alternative part of execution. If the condition is not true, we exit the structure. So again, that's why it's called one-way decision making. So this is an example of our flow chart a very simple flowchart for decision structure. So in the demo symbol we have here, which is code outside, it's a condition. The condition is that it's outside code. If it's true, then we are going to wear a coat. So we are going to execute our statement to wear a coat. But if it's not code, which means it's false, we again exit the structure condition. So condition is true, we execute, we're going to put on a code. If condition is false, we don't need to put on code. So the syntax for if statement in Python, we may have the keyword if, if lowercase, then we may have the condition. Now in Python, anytime we have a condition, we may end the condition with a column. So here we have if condition colon, then we have statement. Again, this is Python, we are tapping. We don't use carry brace like Java or C++. So here we say, if a condition is true, these two statements will execute. If the condition is false, the statement again will be skipped. So here first line, it's known as the if clause, the condition. Now it include the keyword if, lowercase if followed by the condition. Now the condition can be either true or false. When the if statement is executed, that means the condition is true when it was tested. If the statement doesn't execute, it means the condition is false. So we're going to skip it. Now we have a Boolean expression and relation operators. Those are the two concepts that we use to again create a condition. So a Boolean expression means we have only two ways. Either the expression is true or false. That's why it's called Boolean too. And the concept is binary operators. So Boolean expression 
we say expression tested by a statement to be determined if it is true or false, only two way. So example would be, we have two variables, A and B. So let's assume there's a content of A, it's a value. The content of B is a value. Now we are going to test our condition if A is greater than B. Now the greater sign symbol is called relation operators. So normally we use the relation operators to create the condition. We have six relation operators, greater than, greater than or equal, less than, less than or equal, then not equal and equal. So our example here is we check in if A is greater than B. Now, if this condition is true, then the statement that follow this condition will be executed. If the condition is false, then we are going to skip the statement after the condition. So a relation operator always determine whether a specific relationship between two variables or two values are true or false. So that's example again, greater than. Then we also have greater than or equal, less than or equal. Now greater than or equal, uh, there's no space between. So we write the greater and then the equal sign together. No space between. Same thing applied to the less than and equal. So these operators, also, two operators also can be used to test more than one relationship. We also said it is enough for one of the relationships to exist, exist for expression to be true. We also have equality. Now in Python language, one single equal sign means assignment. So when we want to check if two values are equal, we use two equal sign. Again, when you write a two equal sign, there's no space between, there's no space. So equal, equal. Now this is operator that determine whether two values are equal to one another or they are not equal. Now we said do not confuse with assignment operator. So one equal sign means assignment operator. We discussed this again in our previous lectures uh, when we learned how to declare variable, assign values to variables. Now we also have not equal. So not equal means the Exclamation point and equal sign. Again, no space between. So exclamation and equal sign together. This operator will determine that two values are not equal. So if the condition is true that two values are not equal, then the statement will be executed that follow it. So always again, we use relational operators to create our conditions. So examples given here, we have S is greater than Y. This means is S greater than Y. X less than Y, which means is S less than Y. S is greater than or equal to Y. S is less than or equal to Y. Or S equal to Y. Or S not equal to Y. So those are the six relational operators we use normally to create our conditions. So now we also have a, another example here using the flowchart again. Our condition here now in the flowchart, as we said, the flowchart, the diamond symbol is a condition. We test the condition whether it's true or false. So here our condition is, it says greater than 50,000. Well, if the sales is greater than 50,000 and it's true, we are going to give them employee $500 bonus. If the condition is false, which means the sales is less than or equal to 50,000, then there's no bonus. We skip our statement, assign 500 to a bonus. So here we can see we have one equal sign, which means we are assigning $500 to a bonus variable. Now, any relation operator can be used in decision block any of the six relation operators can be used in, a, again, a decision block. So we have example here, if balance equal to zero, and uh, we're supposed to have a column to end it. And also we can say, if payment not equal to balance. So if this condition is true, then the statement that follow it will be executed. Now it is possible to have a block 
inside another block. Example, we can say if statement inside a function or statement in inner block must be indented with respect to the outer block. Again, this is Python language. If I want some expression to belong to a specific condition, then I'm going to indent it always. So let's look for some few programming example here. So this program gets three test scores and then display their average and it's going to congratulate the user if the average is high score. The high score variable holds a value that is considered a high score. So this is our program. First, we have a variable name high score. The value is 95. So a student may take three tests, which we are going to input the three values in test one, test two, test three. Again, we are using the input function. We discussed this earlier time. We know when we use the input function, it allows us to use our keyboard to enter an input into a variable. In this case, it will be test one. But input function, the value that it gives us always will be in a string. So we know we can use a string in arithmetic operations, for example, division, etc. So what we're going to do first, we change it to an int or float, either a whole number or a decimal number. So here we change our test one value to int, test two value to int, test three value to int. So we get our input now. The next thing we do, we calculate the average test score, which will be test one plus test two plus test three divided by three. So now we have the value for average. We are going to print the average value. Now, this is the new thing we are learning. We are going to use the one-way decision-making, which is the if statement, to check if the average value of the student or the average test score of the student from the three tests is greater than or equal to 95. If it's greater than or equal to 95, which is I score variable, then we are going to congratulate him. So here we say, if average greater than or equal to high score, we have a column. Again, the time we have a decision in Python, we end it with a column. Then we indent. If the condition is true, we are going to print congr congratulation. That is a great average. Now, if your average score is less than high score, then these two statements will be skipped. So now let's, let's say that two-way, we call this a two-way statement because the if condition is true, a statement will be executed. Then else section means the condition is false and it's going to be executed. So here we have a dual alternative decision structure, two possible paths of execution. Now the sentence is, if a condition is true, we execute our statement else we execute other statement. That's if the else means if the condition is false. Again, all conditions, we end it with a column. Also the same thing applying to the else, we end it with a, a column. So let's see an example soon, we're using the flowchart. So you can see our flowchart now, we have two different statements now. Our condition is we are checking if the temperature is less than 40. So if the temperature is less than 40 and it's true, we said it's very cold or a little cold, isn't it? Now, if the condition is false, which means the temperature is either equal or greater than 40, then we say it's a nice weather we are having. So again, if else means always with the else section, we should have a statement also. Else section will be when the condition is false, the statement will be executed. When the condition is true, the statement will be executed. A little code, isn't it? When it's false, nice weather, we are having. So with the if else, we can see the syntax here. We have if condition, we end with a column. Then we can have as many statements as we have. Again, we indent it. Else, which means if the condition is false, we have as many statements as we have and we want to execute. 
Now, we say that if a condition is false, this block of statement is executed. Then we continue with the program. If the condition is true, then the first statement will be executed. Now, next, we're going to learn how to compare strings. So here, we can also compare strings using equal and also not equal operators. The relational operators equal and not equal to compare strings. Now, strings comparison are case sensitive. Python is a case sensitive. So uppercase A and lowercase A may not be the same asking value. So here we say string can be compared using greater, less than, greater than or equal, less than or equal also. Now comparing character by character will be based on the asking values for each character. So for example, A will be uppercase A will be 67 asking value and lowercase A will be 66. Now, if shorter word is, is sub string of longer word, then the longer word is greater than the shorter word. What we mean by here is that let's say both two words start with the same character. Let's say we have Albert, A-L-B-E-R-T. Then we have R, A-L or A-L-L. -L, where the longer, we say if a shorter word is a soft string of longer word, then the longer word will be greater than the shorter word. Because A-L, B-E-R-T and A-L, A-L will be the soft string of A-L-B-E-R-T. So A-L-B-E-R-T is greater than A-L. But if we have a -L b e r t and let's say a m m, then it's not a substring of it. So a m m can be greater or lesser depends on the longer. So you have to be a substring of that string. So let's see one example here. This program will compare two strings. So first thing we are going to get a, pa a password from the user. So we use the input function. We tell the user to enter a password. The password is saved in a variable name password. Now, next we're going to determine whether the correct password was entered. So we say that if password equal to Prospero, then we print password accepted. Else we print sorry, that is a wrong password. So that's our condition. When the user enter the password, we are going to compare the password with the password Prospero. If it's the same, remember the password variable, we have the user password that he enter. So we are comparing the two. If it's the same, then we accepted it, else we don't accept. The goal here is using two ways. So the if condition is true, password accepted will be printed. If it's false, then print, sorry, that is a wrong password, will be printed. So let's compare strings here. Let's say we have a Mary, you can see lowercase, A-R-Y, uppercase M. Then we have a Mark, M-A-R-K. So these are the asking values of each character. The first one is okay, both uppercase M, so 7777. The next character, both character is lowercase a, so the same value 97, 97. The next character is lowercase r, the same value. But our last character, y is 121 and k is 107. So this means Mary is greater than Mark. Now, if we have m, y, r, a, then we're still going to say the first, uh, it will be Mora, so Mora stay greater than Mark. So it go character by character in a form of asking value to compare. So let's see the next example. This program compare two strings with a less than operator. So first we are going to get the two names from the user, the two strings. First we enter name to be the last name. Then we enter another name, another last name, and the first name, last name, first name, last name, first. So now we're going to display the names in alphabetical order. 
here are the list of the names. So first we say, if since we're going to print it in alphabetical order, we want the, the name, the lower name to come first before the upper name. So here we are going to use the less than to check. If name one is less than name two, then name one will be printed first. Otherwise, if name one is greater than name two, then name two will be printed first. So this will allow us to enter two names and we are going to print them in alphabetical order in sequence, uh, in an uh, increasing order, the lower name first. Next, we talk about nested decision structure and if LFS. Now, this is if we have more than two decisions to make. So here we see a decision structure can be nested inside another decision structure, commonly needed in programs. For example, we're going to determine if someone qualified for a loan, they must meet two conditions. So this would be a nested decision structure. So must earn at least $30,000, must have been employed for at least two years. These two conditions have to be true. So we're going to check first condition. And if it is true, we check second condition. If the first condition is false, we don't need to check the second condition. So which means we are going to have a nested decision structure. The first condition will be outside. The second condition will be inside the first condition. But since both conditions have to be true, it doesn't matter. We may choose the second condition outside and the first condition inside, or the first condition inside, the second condition outside. So let's see how the flowchart works as an example for the nested decision structure. Here we have a salary greater than or equal to 30,000. Now, if it's false, then we're going to deny everything. We don't need to check the second condition. But if it's true, then we go and check the second condition. Yes, on job is greater than or equal to two. If it's false, then we deny you. If it's true, then you qualify for the loan. So here is a nested decision tree. We are checking both condition. If salary is greater than or equal to 30,000 and the number of years on the job is greater than or equal to two, then we approve you for loan or you qualify for the loan. If your salary is less than 30,000, then we make a quick decision. We don't need to check the second condition. You are not qualified for the loan. Now, if it's greater than 30,000 or equal, but you are in the job less than two years, then you still didn't qualify for the loan. You only qualify for the loan if the two conditions are true. So in this case, which will be our next lectures is we can use what we call the logical operators. For example, we have the end operators, all operators and not. End operators means all the conditions have to be true. So instead of using the nested decision structure, I would say that if salary is greater than or equal to 30,000 and years of job greater than or equal to two, then we are proved to you. Else we don't approve. So in this case, we can either use and logical operator to combine the two conditions together as one without having to do the nested decision structure to put one decision inside the other. And we may discuss about that later on. Now, another important to use a proper indentation in a nested decision structure. As we said in, the, in this example here, we have when we have the first condition, we have to indent and have the second condition in that then have our statement if it's true or if it's false. Then we have the index for outside also. So this is the example here. We say that here again, we have a multiple condition, more than two. So if we have more than two conditions, we use the if, elif, else, which means we can say if condition one is true, print the statement, Elif condition two, print the state statement. Elif condition three, print this. We can have as many E L I F as many as we want. So that's what we insert as many Elif clauses as necessary. If I have hundred conditions, I'm going to insert Elif ninety eight. 
else will be one last condition. The first will be if condition. So alignment use with if elif else statement. If elif and else classes are all aligned, must be aligned again in depth. Condition actually, we can see the example. What we mean by all must be aligned, we can see how they are all aligned together. The if elif and that for each condition. So let's see an example here. This program is going to determine whether a bank customer qualifies for a loan, as we saw earlier. So here we have our minimum salary again is 30,000. That's our variable name. Minimum years is two. Those are the two variables for years and salary. Now we're going to get the customer's annual salary. So customer gave, we use the input function to get a customer annual salary. We change it to float because there may be a decimal in cent. Then we get the number of years it worked, the customer work. Also using input, this time we use int because years are one, two, three, et cetera. Now we have the two variables now. We want to determine if the user salary is greater than or equal to 30,000. And if the number of years in work is at least equal to two or greater than two, and then it's qualified for the law. Otherwise it's not qualified. So this is our condition. You can see here we are using nested. So we say if salary greater than or equal to mean salary, we end with the column. Now we need to indent it. We can't put, if we put it, uh, align it together, it means the second condition doesn't affect the first condition. By this case, our first condition is true. Then we are going to check the second condition. We indent it. If the years on the job is greater than or equal to minimum years, then we have your loan qualifier. Else, we didn't you didn't qualify for the loan, which means the condition is false. Now, if salary greater than or equal to minimum salary is false. Then we have else here, you must earn at least whatever amount, 30,000 people. So you can see here, this is again, nested decision structure. The first condition is true. We go to the second condition to check. If it's true, then we print. If it's false, we print the false section. But if the salary, the first condition is false, then we go straight to the else. We are going to skip everything here because everything is indent in the first condition. So if the condition is false, we are going to skip the if else, inner if else, and go to the last section, print the output. Now we mentioned the logic operators. It's a very good operator, especially if we have to combine two or more conditions. So logic operators, operators that can be used to create complex Boolean expressions. So we have the end operator, also we have the all operator. Then we also have the not operator. End operator means all the conditions must be true. All operator means only one condition must be true. Not is negate, it's to opposite. So if you say not true, the answer will be false. If you say not false, the answer will be true. So normally we call the not operator as a unary operator then we call the N and O as a binary operator because you need two conditions on the left and right. So let's see the example of N operator. As we said, N operator, we take two Boolean expressions as operands, then it's going to create a compound Boolean expression. It's a compound that is true only when both sub expressions are true. So if the two conditions are true, then the output will be true. If one of them are false, the output is false. If both of them are false, the output is false. So this is the true table for the end operator. Here we are zooming the expression. We have two expressions. The first expression is false. The second expression is false. So the output will be false. The first expression is false. The second expression is true. So the output is still false. In the third, the first expression is true. The second expression is false. So the output also false. You will only get true if both expressions are true. So that's why we said the previous example, instead of using the nested decision structure, I can say that 
if the minimum salary is greater than or equal to 30,000 and the number of years work is greater than or equal to two, then we approve the loan. So I don't have to make it a nested decision, just one decision. We also have the all operator, same as the end operator in terms of the sentence and the concept. But with the all operator, we only get false if all the conditions are false. So you can see first expression false, second expression false, the answer is false. But first expression is false, second expression is true, the answer is true. First expression is true, second expression is false, the answer is still true. First expression is true, second expression is true, the answer is still true. So with the all operator, we only get false when all the expressions are false. Then we have what we call the short circuit evaluation. Now, what we mean by uh, short circuit evaluation is that when we have an expression, for example, the, I'm using the end operator, I will put the condition that is most likely going to be false. Because if I have 10 conditions using N operator, nine end operator, if the first part is false, then I don't need to, we don't need to check the rest. The program will not check the rest. Because if one is false, automatically everything is false. Same thing if I'm writing a condition using all operator, I will make sure I put a condition that is likely to be true. So when one condition is true, automatically means the output to be true. Because if the rest are false, let's say we have 10 conditions, nine are false, but one is true, the answer is true. But if, I, if the true is last, that means the program will check the first condition, the second, false, 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 until you reach the last one true, then it has said everything is true. So with the all operator, we always, if left operand is true, the compound expression is true. Now with the end operator, if the left operand is false, then automatically everything is false. Next, we go to the not operator. Again, not operator, we said it's a unary operator. It takes only one condition. So we said the expression is true, not true means it's false. The expression is false, not false means it's true. Now, next, checking numeric ranges with logical operators. So let's see an example here. We're going to determine whether a numeric value is within a specific range of values and we are using the end operator. So for example, we say X is greater than or equal to 10 and X is less than or equal to 20. This means our range values will be from 10 to 20 because we say S should be greater than or equal to 10. So we, can, we only start from 10 and S is less than or equal to 20. We don't go more than 20. So the range here will be from 10 to 20 using an operator. Now to determine whether numeric value is outside of a specific range of values, we can use all. So we can see the difference between the N and all. Here we use N to make sure the value of S is within the range 10 to 20. But if I want a value outside the range, I'll use all because here I say if S is less than 10 or S is greater than 20. So if I get any value greater than 20 is true. If I get any value less than 10 is also we get true. Now, next we go through what we call the Boolean variables. Again, as we said, anytime we mention the term Boolean, it means we have only two possible outcomes true or false. For example, in C++ program, we say one or zero. One represent true, zero represent false. So here, references of, references one of the two values, true or false, a Boolean variable. And the Boolean variable data type is always bool, same as Java. As we know in Java, we need to declare the variable. So I will say int norm or bool uh, norm or bulk because the goal with Python is that we normally don't have to declare the variable data type, but the content of it will tell us, we tell Python what the data type of the variable is. Normally we use a Boolean variable 
to use as a flag. So maybe I'll flag to set some value to be false and later check out that it's, you can set it to true or false. So that will be the conclusion of these lectures. So again, these lectures, we focus on the basic concept of control structure for decisions. As we said, there are three control structure in almost every programming language. Sequential decision, sometimes called the selection. And also we have the loop and also sometimes called repetition. So in this lecture, we cover again, the decision control structure. And we use two type of variable, I mean, operators for this, relation operators and also logical operators. And we cover both of them. Again, thank you for these lectures. Bye.